Well, I got some bad news for you. Lori's not here today. Instead, <laughs> she's stuck with me. Hey, my name is Jason. I'm a friend of Lori's, and she's asked me to fill in today because she's had to move, not move away. Um, she had a family emergency she had to go attend to, so she's going to be doing that for a few days. Hopefully, it'll all work out, and she'll be back um, maybe Friday, maybe Monday. But until then, uh, you're going to be seeing me and the lovely Dan uh, filling in for Lori in all of her spots. I was here last week, so maybe some of you guys know me. And uh, I know Lori would want me to say hello to Topher and Night Truck and Mighty Ponds and Andre, Greg and Basque and Homebody and Caesar and Mary Kemp. Of course, Mary Kemp's here. So good morning, everybody. Carlos, I would be honored to be a queen. Queens are pretty, pretty, can't say, <laughs> they're pretty cool, pretty good. Got no problem being a queen. Okay. Let's go do a couple of chart requests. Got to start the motor up. It is uh, 5.23 a.m. over here. Got up at 4, just trying to wake up. And I now find that getting the motor going is the most important problem. Task. So I did see a couple of requests uh, earlier today, right away this morning. We'll do a couple of those. And then at approximately 7 minutes, we'll jump into the regular show which will be your review of our indices, a few tidbits of news, some resistance levels, uh, looking at some important things. Hmm, Vert video. Let's try this a bad boy out. Hmm. Camera and video broadcast. Let's see, oh, did we bug out? All right, I'm trying to turn on the creepy eyes. Let me know what you think about it. Okay. So we were looking first at XRP USD. That was a request, right? Yeah. And without much um, prompting, the question was, does this, does this look like a red flag to you? Okay, right, so XRP USD, let's make sure we're looking at the right thing here. Where was that bar? XRP USD, that's one. All right, Carlos, despite you calling me the queen, or perhaps because you did, I don't know, we're going to be looking at... Uh, XRP USD. So I guess the question that you're asking is, is this big move up and this following consolidation a red flag? No. By itself, this sort of pullback is expected. Anytime we get any sort of monster move on a ticker, we look and expect consolidation. That's where we have our either our short opportunities or our, uh, our next long opportunities, right? Very rarely do we get to catch the breakout. What we got to wait for and be patient for are not FOMO into the run-up is the consolidation. So by itself, no, this looks great. I expect to see consolidation. What I don't like on this particular move is the amount of volume on this particular exchange that got us here. So what I want to do is go and look at another exchange, maybe a, a bigger one. Uh, Binance, yeah, okay, let's look there. All right, that's better. So when we have low volume and we have a very, very uh, large move, it's not a particularly good thing. It means that majority of the, the buyers or, yeah, there's not a lot of votes cast for that particular move. What we want to see is a large candlestick move and a large amount of volume flowing in telling us that the market agrees with that movement. If it just moves a lot on little volume, that is just you and me and three other people being very, very excited and possibly making a big mistake. So it's not what we want to see. This looks okay. Daily consolidation underway, sure. Four hour time frame, okay. I like that we have a volume climax. We are dropping off a little bit. Altogether, we are looking for a four hour higher low over 37.27. So we can go all the way, all the way down there technically and still have a daily higher low. That's great. EMA 12 is a nice area for support. So the downside to this particular thing and the downside to every chart that we're gonna look at today is that we have FOMC. That is at 2 p.m. Eastern, and there's a meeting at uh, half an hour after those minutes are released. And then it's going to whipsaw and break almost everything that we're going to talk about today. It's expected that, well, we'll get to that when we do the regular show. Um, but what we're going to be looking for, assuming that news doesn't exist, we're going to look for a four-hour higher low because we have the, the range of our channels uh, between our highs of our candlesticks and our lows of our candlesticks. We'd like to be able to draw a little bit of a trend in here, and sometimes we can get a little bit of a pattern. 
All right, so it's a little bit early because we only have two points of contact for this guy and this guy. But one of the things we can agree on, is we like to agree, and we like to find confluence, and we like to have our charts work together pretty well, is that we have a tightening range. You don't have to call it a wedge. I don't care what you call it, but we can agree that from this high to that low, and from this high to that low, vertically the distance has decreased. So we are getting a bit of a squeeze. See our trend coming down, right? We're getting that form of compression here. We are converging that range. So this is typically, typically, generally a reversal pattern. So I will look for a bounce above the EMA 12 and look for a five and 50 minute trend change. Bulls need to take 45 cents. Okay, altogether, Ned's consolidation pattern, close to back burner over, oversold. Yeah, not so bad. So no, not a massive red flag to me. All right, let's check the chat again. Pressure's gonna be wild. Yes, yes. Oh, where are my notes? My notes are paltry and they're really for me. I don't have much to share in the same way Lori does. Um, but I did just have some banking notes. Um, okay. I'm a pretty chill, smart guy. Thank you, John. Can you tell my wife that? Oh, uh, I also promised that I would show this off. Um, although he's never going to watch my stream. This is my super sweet new Lego airplane. I'm not sure if you can see it. Hold on. Yes. Check that out. Super jealous? I know you are. All you need to do is have five children and you two can amass a collection of Lego. And it will just sit on your desk. And occasionally they will call into question its existence and if you still love them because where's the Lego? All right. We got time for one more quick request then we'll get into the show. BABA -B -A, weekly stair step down on the verge of breaking bullish. That's possible. BABA -B -A. weekly stair step down. So anytime we get pattern in the weekly time frame, I want to know what are we looking for? Do we have just cause to be interested in it? We are looking for a monthly lower high. We've confirmed that. So now we are looking for a support test way down here. 54, 58.44. Yeah, something like that. Weekly time frame, yes, stair step down. Uh, we have a potential little break here, but even if we break this, we have EMA 12 overhead. We have uh, a lot of work to do. The question will be, can we break the daily time frame? I like this little play here, probably right above uh, 84.52 uh, or 84.29, okay. So if we can break this level, and this is like, there's a bunch uh, of overhead resistance here, then we have the opportunity for a little bit of a pop on the daily time frame. So what we have is daily resistance here, and it's very likely we have EMA 12 resistance on the weekly time frame somewhere in between those two things. Oh, right above. Okay, so then I'll be looking for uh, a run up on the daily time frame, probably to about the first obstacle, which is mm, 88. See how the, these we have these lows. Former support becomes resistance. That will have, let's say, assume we do it in two days, it's going to be having a pretty extended hour and four hour time frames. So not quite ready for a long entry on the weekly time frame, but we do have a good intraday, maybe a two day run potentially, if we can get some good positive news for the market and we can break our 84.52 on happy little decent volume. But that's what I see. Okay. Good morning. My video skills have improved. Yeah, man. That's called buying better tech, I think. <laughs> but yeah, uh, if you go back on the Chart Guys uh, page, Dan does 99% of all the content for the Chart Guys, right? If you go back and look at the very first videos that he uploaded, now we're, we're talking like seven, eight years on the channel. It's pretty remarkable. But yeah, we're trying to enter the 21st century. All right, my friends, it is. It's getting some errors on my screen. Gotta make sure you can still hear me, see me. Okay. Good morning. Welcome to the the pregame show. It is March 22nd. If you're just tuning in, uh, Lori is away on family emergency. She'll be back in a few days, I hope. Until then, you'll be seeing me in the morning and the midday shows and anything that Lori needs a little bit of help with. We'll be filling in to do our best for our superhero who usually just crushes this show. So I'm gonna do my best to mimic and fill her very, very big shoes. 
All right, so main, main topic for us today is that we have the FOMC meeting. We have uh, a little calendar that you can plug in here if you don't know about it. On the old trading view, it looks like this little calendar icon. And what we can do is go important things only, Fed rate decisions, that is 11 p.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern. So we are forecasted to raise the rates by 0.25. And some of the discussions we've had internally in the chart, guys, uh, you know, some of our Zoom calls is essentially if they don't raise the interest rates, I feel that would be a little bit of a sign of trouble for the market because the idea is that they raise the interest rates until something breaks. So if they suddenly stop raising the interest rates, it means that there is significantly more concern for the banking sector and financial uh, economic strength overall and perhaps they've gone too far so we actually want to see that sort of 2.25 rates to show them that to show us that the fed is still confident uh, in what they're doing is the right thing and that the economy and the banking system and everything can handle this sort of continued progression and it was uh, for lack of a better word transitory volatility am i allowed to say that so expecting a 0.25 um previous was 4.75 okay now with that said that is going to give us some opportunities this morning for intraday plays as the futures and as our stocks sort of settle into probably a holding pattern for the last two hours before the meet. So most of your opportunities are going to be in the first couple hours of the day and then probably just stabilize off into the end of the day, uh, into the, uh, the meeting time. So uh, what it also means for us is that we need to be particularly careful about our positions that we're in. And it's very likely that a lot of what we're going to talk about this morning is going to be whipsawed around, all right? My first videos have been here for six years. Hey, Kevin, that's an OG right there. Six years, can't believe it, man. Um, okay, so FOMC meeting. Let's take a look at some indices. I have a, a tendency to be a little bit long-winded, and I know I've got about maybe 20 minutes to do this. All right, so what I've done today is I have looked at some key levels for us on larger time frames. You can go and screenshot those if you want to. Uh, what we're looking at is ES daily resistance is up here, and then we have four-hour and hourly resistance because the bulls have been doing pretty good. So what we need to do is... Ideally, if we get a good solid bull reaction, a major goal for the daily bulls would be to take out the 4082 area resistance. That would give us a, a, a chance, a chance here to establish a weekly uptrend that's going to go trend neutral for us. And it's going to give us a little bit of a high over this lower high. Daily time frame, that will give us an opportunity to reconfirm that we have a very so strong and confident daily and four hour trend, but ultimately 4082.50 is the daily resistance we need to be looking for, and we will be having some shorts up there. So watch for some intraday volatility. If we creep up toward that level and we see FOMC reactions having big whipsaws up and down as we often do, if we see an initial spike up to 4082, I know there are going to be a lot of ninja scalpers waiting for shorts at that level. So quite a bit uh, of interest on that side. And as we look to the hourly time frame on ES, we can see that we have uh, a rejection from our 40, uh, 43, that is our overnight high. And then we have a little bit of support from our EMA 26 coming in on the hourly. We're already sort of stagnate, stagnating out on the hourly time frame, And this is the sort of behavior that I would expect leading into the FOMC. There's always going to be a little bit of turbulence as we hit the open and cash starts flying around uh, ultimately. Bears want to, no, bulls, want to hold a four-hour higher low over, well, I already wrote this down. We're going to call it, I don't remember which one I decided, probably the red, 39, 84, 75. We're looking for four-hour higher lows, and then we have our little tightening hourly range. So see how we are right in the middle of our high and our low, easily capable of hitting either of those today, which puts us as a little bit of a predicament. Bulls do have a slight advantage here as they have directionality. But it is an unknown variable the FOMC gives us. All right, let's go take a look at uh, NQ. So NQ daily resistance. NQ bulls are really doing well. So we have daily resistance way over here. In fact, that's probably, yeah, that's a weekly resistance. If we can crack 12,949.75, there's going to be even more confidence coming into the market, even more risk on vibes, and that will set another weekly higher high and a weekly higher low. Daily time frame consolidated not too long ago. So we have a little bit of daily support right down here, 12,525. And there we go. I'm going to get rid of that now. Hopefully you can go back and grab it if you need to. 
We have daily bulls in charge, weekly bulls have their target. Four hour time frame bulls are holding steady. As long as they stay over EMA 12, they're gonna be in short term control. And we are looking for another higher low here. Hourly time frame, overnight high, 12,898. And we have our overnight low. So we'll be watching one of these ranges to break. And then we're gonna look for some commitment on either side of that. Once the market opens and the market pushes up, if we cross over and fall right back down, that's not a good look for the bulls. That's a lot of selling pressure up there. What we need to do is get up there, stay up there, establish support, and try to move on. Again, I got to caution you on anything um, because of FOMC. A reminder, if you're just tuning in, we have big volatility expected today. It is going to be at 11 p.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to hit that like button. Thank you, man. Do you guys understand, like, I know everyone who does YouTube videos says, can you hit the like button or hit the subscribe button or the notification button? Literally, that's like all that matters in a lot of ways. Like it's awesome that people watch and numbers matter for viewers, of course. But when you press the like button, it, it says, hey, YouTube, I like this. This is good content. This is important content. You should reward this this person, this creator. It's, it's like the five-star review that gets more reviews, gets more business. So every time you hit the like button, it is a, it's not a little thank you. It's a massive thank you. And we really appreciate you guys doing it. So yeah, I, I, I too cringe at myself asking for the like button to be hit, but it is really key to success on the YouTube. That and asking for subscribers and all that jazz. It's all part of the game, man. Okay, let's go take a look at YM. So YM also balancing out in the hourly time frame. Let's get our contacts. Ooh, you know what I like about YM is the fact we had this big daily range. We broke over top of it and we were just chopping around. Ah, shoot, I deleted my chart. But we had, uh, how did I draw it? How did I draw it? So we have a range. We drop into range. We drop out of range. Let's put it right here. So we had this big value area high we kept smoking into. We got back up there yesterday and then finally got over top of it. So now we are finding that acceptance above the value and now we're getting into a little bit of balance again. What that means is we've moved out of that little balance range and bulls are looking for an opportunity here and they have a long way to do to go, but we got a nice little springboard to do the consolidation. If we see some good solid, it's going to be have to be pretty uh, extended solid strength uh, because 33,590 is our area of resistance. But we have good opportunity here on the four hour time frame to make moves up into overbought conditions. Again, FOMC, it's going to ruin everything. We're near our overnight high. In fact, we've just within the last couple of hours broken that level and we have a nice hourly uptrend. We do have a little bit of a wedge on watch. So look for some pullback and a uh, higher low over uh, 32,563. Lori did get a haircut. She went too far, but like too far. We had a meeting yesterday where uh, our chart gals <laughs> were, were talking to each other about their, their hair and... Um, Feels bad. Feels bad, man. I don't got any hair. But I'm not willing to go to Turkey and risk everything. Uh, all right. RTY daily time frame. RTY is a laggard in this case. We have not seen a ton of strength. And we have very clear areas of resistance. So we have balance. And when we have balance, we can go and draw that balance. So let's go and do that. So what we need to do is find our... When did we fall into balance? Right about here. When did we get out of balance? Well, we're not out of balance. All right. So we are over our value area. We're good in that respect. Bulls need 1810 to get above the big zone of resistance. They're doing well, but really anything over 1736, that range would be just fine because it'll be balanced continuation. So again, looking for positive moves in the market, looking for good reactions to the FOMC announcements to give our bulls on the NQ side a push up to give our YM bulls confidence to break above and stay above that big balance range. And lastly, RTY, we need these guys on board. The RTY represents a lot of the smaller companies that make up uh, our entire economy. They're not like those single one ofs. This is like as close to mom and pops as you can get. So if the mom and pops are strong, the economy's strong, the market's strong, okay? That's what we wanna see. So looking for RTY to have some good follow through there. Nice beard. Thanks, brother. Slowly shaving it down. I've lost like a lot of weight 
because I'm doing the, the, the fitness thing. And I used to have to balance my weird round face with a long beard. And then I ended up having this skinny face now because I've lost like 35, 40 pounds. And then this long beard. And it was looking strange. All right. Let's take a look at uh, the dollar. So dollar uh, getting a little bit of a wedge vibe here on the daily time frame. And it's really just a form of that, that range compression, right? I'm not even going to draw it very elegantly. But we can agree that our ranges as we move through this, uh, these levels is converging. So right now we have room for a lower high. We look for our dollar bounce up to our EMA 12, which is going to be this uh, darker red line here. And I would expect that to come if we have FOMC announcements that negatively impact the market and positively impact the dollar. One of the cool tricks we can do when we are trading is to watch our ES and our dollar and look for odd relationships. If we see our ES moving up and our dollar moving up, it's likely that ES is gonna fade a little bit because we need an inverse, uh, most of the time we need an inverse reaction or a relationship between those two things. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. Appreciate that. It's been a long struggle. Mostly because I love McDonald's. And McDonald's is fine. You can have it. If you're dieting, you can have whatever you want. You just got to make sure your macros fit in. And frankly, it's just not worth it. There's too many calories per macro in that food. And I'd rather just be full. All right. USO. I should add, I just eat whatever I want. So if you guys have questions, you want some help, I'll tell you how I did it. All right. We're going to take a look at U.S. oil, natural gas, gold, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and that will probably be our morning. All right. So U.S. oil, weekly time frame. We have this big daily range. We have broken that range, and now we're seeing a little bit of a bounce here on the daily. So that is expected. We got daily oversold. We're scouting that level. Wonder how it's shaped up on the hourly time frame. We are over our daily highs, so we got ourselves a nice bounce underway. Four-hour time frame. What did you give us? Oh, a little V-shape here. Nice. Okay. So what we ended up getting was our drop down, our volume up, and a break over 67.40 to show us that the hourly trend had, in fact, changed for the better. And now we are holding our EMA 26. So as long as bulls stay above our EMA 26, EMA 12, they're going to be in good shape. That's a very good reaction to hourly overbought conditions. we got an initial quick pop to the downside and then bulls remaining Feverish. So four hour bull flag in play, 69, 61 area of resistance. We're trying to get a confident close over that level, but it looks to me like bulls want to get it. And did we, yeah, looking for a confident close over 69, 61, then resistance 779, and let's call it 7249. Nice four hour bull flag in play. Natural gas. So this is a range you guys want to be watching on natural gas. We have uh, a big four hour channel. And the way we get that channel, let's just go ahead and draw it again. We got our low here. We'll swing it up until we hit uh, some sort of interaction. And then we drag a parallel line up. We say, you know what? We got ourselves a big old, very, very confirmed four hour trend. And I'm in the middle of doing a video on trend lines. And I completely forgot about this one. So I'm going to have to go back and redo a section because this is a fantastic trend. We drew this the other day. And uh, on the four hour time frame, we came down, hit that level perfectly and had a great bounce out of it. So what we're going to be looking for is continuation to the downside. As long as we remain in this channel, these projected trend lines are nice little areas for us to be scouting short term reversals with nice little stop levels because you are swimming upstream. Remember, everything down, everything here says bears. So we don't, it's harder to go long. You're swimming upstream when you take a long position here because you know what, time is not on your side and momentum's not on your side. Ultimately, these are better for shorting positions. But if you're going to be looking for longs, you're going to be wanting to scout something in the area of our trend line support. Just showed you how to draw it. $2.12 is our support level for our downtrend and our leap and 15 minute bears also in control. So, not my favorite play right in the middle of the range, but a nice little setup on the larger time frames. Okay, gold, gold seeing some consolidation here. This one's likely to react to the FOMC volatility as well. 
Uh, lots of room for higher lows in the daily time frame. EMA 12 right there. That's the blue line. So we have clear strength in the market. Seen some healthy consolidation so far. Four hour time frame. Yeah, look at that. Just stagnating. So to the four hour lower low holding. I don't like the fact that we're under our EMA 26. Anytime we get into a position where we should be looking bullish and we're seeing overhead resistance and bulls unable to push above, that's a little bit more telling for downside action. So we've got ourselves day, our four hour support at 1885.790. And I would be watching for volatility and reactions in both directions to our highs and to our lows. It's not dissimilar to that other chart we looked at, right? Where we were basically just grinding the median between two key points of uh, resistance and support, right? So we're going to be watching for confidence and direction. What we don't want to do is 45 minutes into the trading day, see our internals being just flat. So if you're in the chart, guys, I'll be going through internals this morning. Uh, I would expect them to be pretty slow and steady, which means it's probably going to be a very, very pick and choose day for me as far as trading. Hey, Tamazon. I feel like I haven't heard your voice in a long time. Used to come into the, the Zoom calls. Where have you been? Too busy rocking uh, work, I guess, Sam. Hey, did they did they find you out? They find you out, Tamazon? Um Hey Michael. Uh, our trading view question. Market still bull looking bullish today. Everything's looking like it wants to continue if FOMC wasn't here. FOMC is causing everything to pump the brakes, right? It's like we're in a race and we're having a great time. We're going around the corner and all we see is a sign, like a warning sign ahead. So what we want to do is approach it in a controlled fashion. Very likely, you're not going to step on the gas when you see that. You're going to step on the brakes and give yourself more opportunity, more time to react to the unknown variable that's coming at you. That's what we're doing today. Uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin daily time frame. Oh, I hope your husband's okay, Tamazon. Sorry to hear that. Um, Four hour time frame, daily time frame. Okay. I was looking at this one earlier, and what was really interesting about Bitcoin is the squeeze we had on it. And I'm not talking about a short squeeze. I'm talking about sideways compression. Daily time frame here, we can see that our candles are getting smaller. If we go to the four hour time frame, you can see these periods where we have a breakout and we go sideways, breakout, sideways, breakout. That is squeeze, anaconda squeeze indicator. So here we go. Four hour squeeze, little dots. You can see our momentum slowing. We get squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. What we want to do is have these guys go golden. Big old gold squeeze. Here's an example. Squeezing up and we have momentum shift. Boom, up to 28,000. Now we're doing it again. Now, the very general rule with these squeeze patterns is, and this is very general, so don't yell at me if and when this doesn't work. The idea is <clears throat> we have <coughs> a direction and we rest and we squeeze and we get pressure on both sides. But because we have an overall direction and we have indecision here, that direction usually, sometimes, more often than not, I guess is a better way to say it, continues in the direction of the preceding so we end up with another movement up and to another squeeze. In the last few years, uh, following COVID basically, uh, you could see that happening quite a bit on names like Amazon, where we have just continued sustained growth and you get in these squeeze formations and they were absolutely gorgeous. So on the four hour time frame, we see the squeeze and it's really, really apparent on the hourly time frame as well. So what we've got to do at that point is say, all right, we know we're in a squeeze, great job. He showed us some fancy little lines and colors. Now we want to know where's our key levels. Where are we hanging around? We're now at a value area high, and we know the bulls have a clear resistance to break above uh, 28,605. So I think this is likely to come with our FOMC decision. And uh, our next resistance on the Bitcoin is up here at $30,000. And our key support down here is 26,652. All right, so overall in balance, our back burner on the hourly time frame is creeping up, so still very, very strong. Any quick flushes down are going to give us good five-minute oversold opportunities. 
hourly oversold opportunities, 50 minute oversold opportunities. Bulls have advantage right now. They need to keep this con momentum continuing and I like this squeeze setup, okay? Ethereum, daily time frame. Daily is a little bit janky. We have our clear area, of, uh, let's call it a triple top, 1846. We have a four hour downtrend and not nearly as strong as the Bitcoin is, but we can try to draw a little bit of a trend here. I always like to draw. You know what? I would wait. I would wait on this one because what I want to see is pull back on the hourly time frame to confirm to me that we are in an hourly trend or an hourly wedge pattern. I like to, I don't like to use the most recent data here. I'd like to get a third confirmation and we have time for it. But ultimately, uh, we can see we have a converging range if we're using our candlestick closes. Bulls want to break out of this range over 1812 and then we have that 1846.50 area resists right right us dollar canadian dollar four hour time frame we have a descending triangle double bottom support clear area resistance we broke over that we've reconfirmed it as an area support now trying to establish a four hour higher low again waiting for our dollar to do something and our flmc reactions let's see where we're shaping up this morning as we head into the open We're gonna be paying attention to our overnight highs, 1630, March 23rd. <laughs> Here's a fun fact if you guys don't know, uh, Canadians and the UK, we put our, our our dates backwards, whereas the States is, I can't remember which one's which, it's like day, month, year, we'll do month, day, year. And this is very confusing because I keep reading that as March 23rd, not Wednesday the 22nd. And it's a problem that has plagued me for a long time on trading view. Okay, so yeah, let's call that the overnight high, 4043, overnight low, 4022. And we've already got our lovely levels on the NQ. All right, setting to open right in the middle of balance, looking for moves and acceptance above one of those ranges to give us our initial read on the day. Failure to do so and failure to failure to do so and falling right back into range or likely just to hold that range and have a balanced morning until FOMC and then all bets are off. All right, so we have Dan will be covering the FOMC live in the chart guys uh, at 11 o'clock. So make sure you tune in for that one. It is Wednesday, so Lamont will be live in approximately three hours and in exactly six minutes from now. Uh, our man, Charting Man Dan, is going to be live for the members. So go ahead and check that out. I'm going to be watching as well. And um, that's it for the pregame show. So I will very likely be back for tomorrow morning. So hopefully you enjoyed my version of the show. And Friday will either be myself or Dan. And uh, Laura should be back Monday. All right, my friends. That is it for now. Have a wonderful day. Chart guys, I'll see you in just a second.